When looking at batteries in the previous assignment, we used a zinc copper battery as our primary example. We talked about zinc being a reactive metal, so it likes to lose electrons, it likes to oxidize. And we talked about copper being a fairly unreactive metal. It doesn't want to oxidize, so it provides a site for reduction. If you put a piece of zinc in a solution of copper two ions, what you'll see is that the zinc will oxidize. It will give off electrons. The copper two ions will reduce, and so it will pick up electrons and form elemental copper. And if you look closely, you'll see that this piece of zinc is starting to develop a copper color as the copper ions are reducing to form elemental copper on the surface of the zinc metal. Let's reverse it. What happens if you put a piece of copper in zinc solution? Well, actually nothing happens because we already said earlier that copper doesn't really oxidize very readily, whereas zinc really likes to oxidize. So the zinc ions aren't going to readily reduce onto the copper and the copper isn't going to readily oxidize and give up electrons. Zinc metal really likes to lose electrons, not gain electrons. And the copper ions are really happy to gain electrons and turn back into elemental copper. So under normal conditions, this is a one-way street. The zinc will react with copper ions, but copper will not react with zinc ions. And we saw this with our batteries. When we did the reaction, we said that the electrons flow from the zinc to the copper. They flow from the area of oxidation to the area of reduction. Another way to state this is that the electrons move from the more reactive metal to the less reactive metal. Or, as the book puts it here, the more active metal to the less active metal. The electrons will not flow back in the other direction. Now let's look at another example. Here's a piece of zinc put in a solution of magnesium ions next to a piece of magnesium that's in a solution of zinc ions. On the example to the left, we see really nothing is happening in that beaker. And in the example on the right, we can see some discoloration and what appears to be some chemistry. What's this telling us? Well, it's telling us that the zinc is not going to readily oxidize in the presence of the magnesium solution. The zinc was happy to oxidize in the presence of the copper solution on the last slide, but it's not doing it with the magnesium solution. Conversely, the magnesium is willing to oxidize in the presence of a zinc solution. So what does that mean? The zinc metal does not lose electrons to the magnesium ions, but the magnesium metal is really happy to lose electrons to the zinc ions. Another way to put this is that magnesium is the more active metal and zinc is less active. Magnesium is more readily oxidized than zinc. This is all laid out on the backs of your periodic tables. I have copied and pasted this activity series on the backs of the periodic table. Russo and Silver refer to this as an EMF series. EMF is a physics term referring to electromotive force. It's an indicator about how much voltage you can get from a battery if you use different metals in combination. But I generally refer to this as an activity series. Which metals are more active and which metals are less active? In other words, which metals are more likely to oxidize and which metals are least likely to oxidize? So as we saw previously, we had copper way down here in the activity series and we had zinc up here in the activity series. Well, zinc is more active than copper. So zinc will oxidize in the presence of the copper solution. However, copper is not willing to oxidize in the presence of the zinc solution. Zinc is the more reactive metal. It's the one that wants to oxidize. In our second example, we used zinc again, but this time we used it with magnesium. And as you can see, magnesium is even more reactive than zinc. So magnesium is more willing to oxidize which means that the zinc produces a site for reduction.